Hello, my lovely YouTubers. What are you doing? Mm. What are you doing? Hey guys, so I am very, very excited. This is gonna be my very first monthly favorites. Monthly favorites video. And I'm super, super excited because if you guys like this sort of thing, I'll get to do more of these in the future. And I know I'm probably gonna be a little bit late with this video because I've just been running around and doing things and I'm going to Europe actually tomorrow, which is so crazy. And I'm gonna be in Europe for two weeks. I'm going to try to film some gardening related videos, but I don't know if how often that's gonna be. So I apologize if I'm not as active within these next couple of weeks. I will be back at the end of May and I'll, you know, get back on my regular uploading schedule, which probably isn't much of a schedule, but you know, we'll make it work. So for this monthly favorites video, it's gonna be a monthly favorites for the month prior. So these are all things that I'm loving for the particular month, in which case it will be April that I'm going to be loving. So I've tried the products, I've read the products, and yeah, it's kind of like when beauty gurus talk about makeup, they talk about all of the things that they have tried over the past month, and then they do a review on it. Sort of similar, not really similar, kind of similar. So my very first monthly favorites and the next three items are gonna be literature related because I think as a grower, literature is super, super important because reading about it from somebody that has experience and education and, you know, PhD, you know, just degrees to back up the information that they're spreading, experience to back it up sometimes, they don't always have a degree, I think it's super, super important to read because so often we look at videos, we want that instant gratification kind of thing, but I think reading journal articles, scientific journals, and things like that really help you to grow as a grower. So the very first thing is gonna be educational. And as you guys know, I'm gonna be starting my very first flask sometime soon. <laughs> But I got this book called Growing Orchids from Seed, and I wasn't really sure what it was going to entail, if it was gonna be any good, and it has turned out to be amazing. Like, they describe everything in here. They describe the parts of the flower. So the different parts of the flower, Cattleya, Phalaenopsis, uh, Wow, Paphiopelum. <laughs> but they describe the different parts of the flower, so you can harvest pollen, they talk about green pod flasking, they talk about dry pod flasking, they tell you how to make the medium if you want to make it from scratch. It's just a really, really excellent book and I recommend it for anybody that wants to learn more about flasking, even if you don't plan to flask it's still great to learn about the process in general, just to know where orchids get their beginnings from. So growing orchids from seed, I got this on Amazon for like five bucks. It was used, so I definitely recommend this book. Next thing on my monthly favorites, and I think it's something that every gardener should have. I am one of those very old fashioned kind of log keeping people persons because I don't, I don't, I like Excel and I like, you know, those things, but I am very tangible. I'm a very tangible kind of person. I need to touch it and I need to, <laughs> I need to, um, I need to feel the material. That sounds better. I need to feel the material. I need to visually see it and write it. It's just how I am. Although Excel is excellent, I know people have used Excel, you know, they've used Excel to keep track of their orchids, but I like using journals. And it's so crazy because actually my university just went to using online books, eBooks, and I just, I'm really struggling with it because I don't like online things. 
So anyways, that's neither here nor there. But anyways, so this excellent little journal thing, muslin leather, and you can get it at Barnes & Noble if you have a Barnes & Noble in your area, but it is so cool. In case of loss, please return to, I didn't put my name, but I just, I'll let you live if you find this. Anyways, uh, so it's super cool because they have like shapes of plants and they have leaf shapes and just like crazy, just interesting things. And then they have the different zones for the different areas in the world, which I thought was super cool. And then here's where you can list your plants. So you see it has the different tabs plants and pots, tools, design, visits, garden log. So every time you go out to your garden, you can log it and say what's going on. And then, <clears throat> and then something I thought was really, really cool is it has these little sticker labels. So you can choose a couple of these labels. There's some blank pages in the back that you can use. And of course you can have your YouTube videos, your favorite YouTube videos, Holy City Orchids, and you can write down which ones that you really, really like, and then you have a reference to go back to that, hey, I watched this video, what was the name of that video again, who was the name of that channel, and you can write it down. So this is just an excellent, I can't wait to actually write in it because I haven't had time to write in it, but I'm really, really, really excited to jot everything down. It has like this gardening tool. Are these gardening tools? Yeah. Pots and gloves. Super cute. Last thing on my monthly favorites, and no, I'm not sponsored by the American Orchid Society, although if you're watching American Orchid Society. Anyways, this is going to be the May Orchids Magazine, which kind of contradicts the whole April theme here, but I didn't like April's magazine. I didn't think it was very informative or educational. I just, I didn't like anything in it. So that's why I'm using May's Orchids magazine. And here on the cover, we have some Sarcochylus, which is the feature article, I believe. And if you're wondering how to pronounce things, because I know that as orchid growers, we don't always pronounce botanical Latin correctly. I am definitely guilty of that. And that's why I really like this orchids magazine. I wanted to include it in my favorites because it has a pronunciation guide. Oh my gosh, so helpful because actually I was saying sarcochylus and it's sarcochylus. So it's really excellent, educational, informative. You can learn so, so much from this magazine. The pronunciation guide for me has been so, so helpful because especially for plants like Bulbophyllum, a lot of people wanna say Bulbophyllum or Epiphyllum, but it's actually Bulbophyllum and Epiphyllum. It's fill, not file. So it's just been super, super helpful. So I definitely recommend the uh, pronunciation guide. It's just amazing. Now, real quick, I just wanna let you guys know that the May edition for Orchids Magazine is on Sarcochylus. They are so, so cute. Oh my gosh, look at those little guys. They are super, super adorable. And I have been thinking about adding a Sidera Japonica to my collection but a lot of people are getting them and I kind of like to grow things that, I don't know. I, I guess I like to grow things that not a lot of people grow, but even if everybody grew Catacetum, I would still grow Catacetum. I don't know, but the Sidera Japonica is different because it looks like a Phalaenopsis. It's in that section of orchid classified as a Phalaenopsis. It, I can't get past the way that it looks. It looks like a Phalaenopsis to me, and I don't like that look. 
So I think instead I am going to get myself a Sarco Kylis because they are so, so cute. And they grow a lot like Phalaenopsis. They like it hot, they like it humid. And that means that they like to be kept moist year round. So it's pretty easy cultural wise. There's no dry rest period or cooling off period. So I really, really liked this article about the Sarcochylus, but it is not the feature article for me. The feature article for me is actually going to be and Grecum dollii. These ones are so, so cute. So here is the actual plant. It's very, very small in comparison to the flower size. Look how big those flowers are. And some people may say all the Angrecum flowers look the same. What's the big deal? And it's true that they do all sort of have a similar look, but they're actually doing hybridizing with Angracums to insert color. So here are some hybrids. This one was red, and this one has a little bit of purple on there. So they are hybridizing the Angracums to add color into that genus, but for the most part, they are green and white or white with green whatever you want to say, but I just think that the dollii is such a compact plant. Go over here. Such a compact plant. I, I don't know if you guys know, if you saw my video about my Angracum eburnum, that thing is huge and it puts out an enormous spike with tons and tons of flowers and it, it just takes up a lot of room. So if you're looking for something small and compact, this is definitely the way to go. Now, Angracum dollii was just recently put into cultivation. So they're very, very, very rare still. They're hard to come by, but um, if you definitely are able to get your hands on an Angracum dollii, oh my goodness. I will be keeping my eyes out for an Angracum dollii, but I think it's so cool how even today, in this day and age, we are still discovering orchids. The greatest, in my opinion, greatest discovery uh, of an orchid was Phragmopedium covacii. So that's gotta be the greatest discovery within the last 100 years. Phragmopedium covacii was discovered in 2008. And it's actually funny how it came into cultivation. It was first cultivated illegally, brought into the United States illegally, and the gentleman who did that, Michael Kovach, I believe is his name. Kovach, yeah, Kovach. Anyways, so Michael Kovach, he ended up getting put on probation and a $1,000 fine for illegally bringing in Phragmopedium Kovachii from Peru. So it's super, super interesting that even today there is controversy surrounding the extraction of orchids from their natural habitats. And Gregum dollii, though, is legal, and so is Phragmopedium covacii. They're both legal in cultivation, so you should get your hands on Angracum dollii because look how cute it is. Now, most Angracums come from Madagascar, which is off the eastern coast of Africa. They like lots and lots of water when they're actively growing, and then they appreciate a nice cooling off period and not so much water when they're not actively growing. So. They also don't like to be disturbed that much. If you're going to repot, the best time to repot is when they are in active growth. But for the most part, you want to use a high quality medium. That way you're not stuck repotting when it's not time to repot. Like you should be repotting your angrate gums maybe once every four or five years because they really don't like to have their roots messed with a whole lot. But uh, Angracums are so, so pretty. And the cool thing about Angracum dollii is that there have been no registered hybrids with it. So there's so many more orchids that are gonna come into cultivation. I'm, I'm just so excited for the direction that orchid growing is taking. Because, I mean, I really feel like Orchidaceae is the largest family. I know Asteraceae is pretty close, but Orchidaceae just has so, so many hybrids that are coming out every single day. And it's exciting for me as a grower because it means there's opportunity for me to make my own cross and sort of put my name out there. And just the wonderful world of hybridizing is open for everyone. It's not like apples where apple trees, you know, they are still hybridized even today, but they take so, so long and not very many people. Of course, the space is something too, but 
I mean, just orchids are, you're able to make hybrids whenever you want. And it's just, it's a great time to be an orchid grower with all of the orchids that are still being discovered even today. So I really recommend the Orchids magazine for the month of May. It's awesome. So now we're gonna get into some of my other favorites that are not literature. Okay guys, so my other monthly favorite for the month of April is this cool log. I actually just recently got it. I think it was the end of April maybe. So I've only had it for a few weeks now but that is enough time to absolutely enjoy this little um, device. This is Coolog, and I have linked to their website on my other video. You can go and check that out. Uh, it's all about the Mazdavalia that I have here, which I don't know why my camera isn't focusing. Okay, so this little Mazdavalia sits on top of this Coolog. It is not established yet, but it is making some new growth. That new growth was not there um, not as big anyway, so I do know that it is growing, it's not dying, and it's actually making a new bud right there. Hopefully that focuses. So it is making a new bud right there, so I know that it is happy and content for now. Now the cool log is really cool because you fill it with water into the top of here, and it usually lasts about two days depending on how hot it is. The hotter it is, the less time it will last. I did have a bit of bud blast right there. I took it out of its nice and comfortable environment where it was growing in a greenhouse and brought it into my climate, which is quite different. It stays outside all day. But the flower is very long lasting. I mean, I've had this thing for a few weeks now and I love that it is a sequential bloomer. You can see all of the blooms that it previously had there. So I definitely recommend the cool log and they're reasonably priced. I mean, you would spend more on a good quality cedar mount or cork mount. You'd spend more on that than you would on this cool log here. So I definitely recommend them. I will link to them down below just in case you didn't see my video all about the cool log. Another monthly favorite for me, this is kind of a old favorite, is the First Rays K-Lite Orchid Epiphyte Fertilizer. I love this stuff. I've already used quite a bit of it, as you can see. And I go through this stuff quite rapidly. I water my orchids about once a week, maybe once every two weeks with this stuff. And then in between, I'll follow it up with some Super Thrive. And I will also use a seaweed and fish emulsion fertilizer. But I love this stuff. It is absolutely amazing. And if you don't have calcium or magnesium um, in your fertilizing regimen, you definitely need it. I was not using calcium in my fertilizing regimen. I know some people use alternate sources like seashells or oyster shells because they contain calcium. Some people use eggshells, which is totally fine, but I much prefer this liquid form. And it is just a granular formula and it just dissolves rapidly in water so you get a nice even mixture. And you guys can find this at firstrays.com. It's a great, great fertilizer. I can't recommend it highly enough. Alrighty, guys, that's it for me. I am actually going out of the country for two weeks. So I probably will be radio silent on YouTube until that time. I'm going to try to upload some videos because I plan on going to some of the botanical gardens, like the one in London and the one in Glasgow, Scotland. So I will try to upload some videos, but like I said, there's no guarantees that I'll be able to do that. So... This is going to be sayonara for now, but I will be back at the end of May and ready to do more videos for you guys. I just wanted to show you guys, I am so scared of leaving my plants, but I have somebody that's going to take really, really good care of them. And I have just been so, I guess, kind of anal about it. So I drew a little map and I made this little um, how to check if you need to water sphagnum, what the difference is are between dry sphagnum and wet sphagnum and moist sphagnum and I also have a um, instruction care sheet uh, yeah it's a little ridiculous but that's that's what you have to do sometimes if it was a week 
or less, I would not have somebody come over, but because it's two weeks and it's getting ready to get super, super hot, I do need somebody to come over and just make sure that they're still kicking it. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know to do more monthly favorites in the future. Also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And of course, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one in the future. And I will see you guys later.